Today we want to continue this part of the Bible study we are taking in the book of Matthew. This is the part of the scriptures uh, for today. And uh, we are going to speak under forgiveness. The importance of forgiveness. The Lord Jesus Christ is speaking in the book of Matthew in chapter 18. All this part, but I just want to remind you that the Bible was not written in the way that we read it today. I mean, the words of the Lord were not given in that way. We find the books of the Bible split into chapters and uh, verses. But uh, sometimes you will find that one chapter is exactly the continuation of what the Lord is saying in the um, chapter before, previous chapter. So happens with the verses of the scriptures. So we cannot just set apart one part to the other until the subject is finished. And what you find in verse uh, 12 is just a continuation of what we are speaking up to verse 11. And uh, even if you continue, you will read the whole chapter and you will see that it will go to the end speaking about forgiveness. But for us to have a better insight of this, a better comprehension of this, we must go then to the first verse in this chapter 18. Because chapter 18 starts with a specific question And from that question, the Lord Jesus then gives all this teaching. People ask a specific question to him. And from that question, the Lord is answering and giving all these verses that you will find from verse 1 to verse, uh, to the end of this verse uh, 35. The main question here is, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So there is a question mark in the heart of the disciples. Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And because of that, the Lord Jesus then is teaching all these. Why? What the Lord perceived in the question is what normally is going to happen. When we are interested in being the best one, or the greatest one, a lot of problems will will arise. So the Lord Jesus immediately perceived that situation. When they came with the question, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Immediately the Lord Jesus saw the problems that were going to arise because It was not the question. It was the things in the heart of people. It's not really the question. It's your motivations. And then the question is just unfolding what is in the heart of the disciples. Look and see that it is the disciples that came unto him. Not everybody came at that moment. It means they were the leaders helping the Lord Jesus in ministry. They were not unbelievers who came to Jesus. They were the disciples. And when it refers to the disciples, many times he's referring to the 12 that later on were called apostles. And when they unfold what is in their heart and they are seeking a position, that is really what caused the question. They were all interested in knowing what is my position here. Let me tell you that your position is not the important thing, but your relationship. Hmm? 
May I tell you again? Your position is not the real important thing here in this way of the Lord, but your relationship. Your relationship is what counts in the presence of God. Your relationship with God. That's why the real commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ is comprised in one single commandment. And it is, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And your neighbor as you love yourself. That is the main commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says all the law is just comprised in this. Because if you love your neighbor, you will not kill him. If you love your brother, you will not lie to him. If you love your neighbor, you will not covet his wife. If you love, so all these things are comprised in just one single commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. So when they ask this question, immediately what is in the heart of them is unfolded in the presence of the Lord. The Lord Jesus interpreted the question. They were asking for a position. Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? So all of them came together. All of them were interested. Don't forget that it is not the only occasion when the disciples do this. The Bible says that in another occasion, two of the disciples named who were the ones that came? James and? James and? You remember? And John. They were brothers. And they came together with their mother. Asking from the Lord just a single petition. Just one request. Lord grant us. That in your kingdom, one of us sit at the right hand and the other one at the left. So no room for anybody else. My brother and I, everybody else, go to the back row. So this will always reveal that human heart is always the same. Not only John and James. Not only the 12 together in this chapter, but John, James, Anthony, Charles, Abraham, everybody of us, Bob, everybody, Mary, Chedid, every single person in this world in his human side is interested in something. And that is what will always cause the problems among the church. It's because of you. It's because of your position. That is what will cause the real problem. Because we want a position. Then, just for the Lord to help the disciples to interpret this in the right way, he called a child. He said to the child, come. And it says, set the child in the midst of them. And he started his teaching with a child in the midst of them. So the Lord Jesus Christ gave all these 
teaching with a child in the midst of them. Are you with me? Could I call a child this morning? Sit this child here. Come. Come. Give me your hand. Right? Step here. Thank you. So the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus preached all his preaching and taught all this teaching with the little child in the midst of them. He started saying, he started saying, when they asked for the position, who is the greatest? The Lord started saying, if you don't become as a little child, you will never make it to the kingdom of heaven. That was the first statement of the Lord. The first one is, if you don't become as this little child, you will never make it to the kingdom of heaven. Then the Lord Jesus continued all this teaching with the child in the midst of them. Then he spoke about the little children and he said, Therefore, if anybody makes a little child, and he was not speaking about this child, he was speaking about everybody, and you cause them to fall, it is better for you, said the Lord, that a millstone be hung on your neck, and you be thrown or be drawn into the sea. And then he didn't stop there, continued with the child there. And said, therefore, if your hand or your eye is an occasion for you to fall, look out your eye, cut your hand, because it is better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye or with one hand than having two eyes or two hands to be cast into the hell of fire. But he didn't stop there. Still he continues and goes on and said, what we read today. He still with the child there saying, what do you think? There was a man that had 100 sheep. And one of the sheep got lost. What do you think? Don't you think the man left the 99 in the wilderness, in the right place, under the shelter. And he went away looking for that sheep that was lost. And it says, when he found the sheep, that man rejoiced more. Listen to this. That man rejoiced more for the little one that he found that was lost, that for the 99 that were in the sheepfold. And then he still continued with the little child there and says, Therefore, if your brother sins against you, you go look for your brother. Being you and him alone. And tell him the truth. Tell him that it is a problem for your heart. Ask him to forgive you. What? It is madness, someone could say. It is my brother who sinned against me. The Lord says, no. Even though it is your brother who sinned against you, you go and look for your brother and ask him to forgive you. And if he doesn't want to hear you, then call one or two more witnesses with you and go again to your brother and say, Brother, please forgive me. You sinned against me. Forgive me. Why is it like this? 
he sinned and I am the one asking the forgiveness. Because once my brother sins against me, my heart is affected too. Though many people don't want to recognize it. Once my brother sin against me, my heart is affected too. A volcano explodes inside of myself because I know my brother sin against me. And it is not only when my brother sin against me. It is always when my brother sin, a volcano explodes in my heart. Then the Lord says, you go and look for your brother and ask him to forgive you. Why? Because you are in problems too. The other one sinned, but you are affected as well. Then it says, but if he neglects to hear you and to hear the two witnesses together with you, then tell it to the whole church. And so the whole church will have a meeting. But if he still neglects to hear the whole church, then there is no remedy. He will be like a publican and a sinner. But the Lord Jesus didn't send the child away. Still with the child there in the midst of them said, listen to this. You have to forgive your brother. And continue with the teaching about forgiveness. And then Peter was so much upset with the teaching and said, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother that sinned against me? Until seven times? Still the child was there. The Lord Jesus said, No. I don't tell you seven times. I tell you 70 times seven. But still the Lord didn't stop there. You go to the rest of the chapter. What is it speaking about? Speaking about a man that had some servants. And one of the servants owed a lot of money to the Lord. But the Lord had compassion on the seven. Isn't it the part of the scripture I'm calling then the Lord said okay I forgive you I forgive the debt you don't have to pay me anything when this man went from the presence of the king still he had someone else who owed him just a little money but when this man found that man on the hallway. He took the man by the neck. And he was just shocking the man. Couldn't almost breathe and said, pay me what you owe me. He said, please have compassion on me. I will pay back to you everything. Please have compassion on me. And it says, the man didn't want to. He said, no, you pay me or you go to jail. Please, I don't have the money today, but help me. Have compassion. I will pay you back. It says, the man didn't want to have compassion. And then he threw the fellow worker into jail. Then the rest of the servants came to the Lord. To the master. And said, master, you forgave this man all this debt. He is free. But he went outside there. He found someone that ought to him. He didn't want to forgive him. He was shocking the man. And then he threw him into jail. Because the man didn't have the money. Then the master, the king called that wicked seven and said, come. I forgave you. That big debt you owed me because I wanted to have mercy on you, but you were not able.
to forgive your fellow worker that ought you such a little amount of money? Is it the way to deal in here? And said, take him and cast him out into jail and into darkness. What is what the Lord is saying? Still with the child right there in the midst of them. The Lord is saying, here, you don't have the right. I have the right. Your only right is to forgive your brother. And all this conversation and all this teaching is because of the question. What is the question? Who is the greatest? Who is the greatest one in the kingdom of heaven? All the, this question originated all this teaching about forgiveness. About being careful with the little ones. About being careful with the ones who ought you something. And finishes saying, if you don't forgive your brother who sins against you, neither your father which is in heaven shall forgive you your trespasses. So the little child still there and the teaching is going on. I never understood that until this morning I was reading it again. That it says the Lord Jesus called a child, set the child in the midst of them and he started the teaching and didn't let the child go until he finished his teaching. Why? The Lord wanted everyone to understand the thing that he was speaking in a visual way. The child there, forgiveness is for children. We adult people have problems to forgive. Really, we have problems. I tell you, that it is hard for us to forgive. The innocence is important. To be as a child is important. And many a times we are not children in the kingdom of heaven. We are grown enough. We are mature. We know but the Lord Jesus is not calling on your understanding. He's calling on your motivation. He says, can you forgive? If you cannot forgive, at the end of the day, you shall be cast out. You will not be able to make it to the kingdom of heaven. Are you with me? How many of you understand my point today? Church, we must have an open heart for the Lord. I say again, we must have an open heart for the Lord. Really, you want to succeed here? Forget about yourself. The Lord says, you have to be as a child. That way. You see, I called the child, she was never anyway, she came. I didn't let her go, she stayed there. She's a child. That is what the Lord says. And if I tell her, just go and sit, she will go and sit. Do you understand now what the Lord is saying? Go and sit. Go and sit. You see? That is exactly what the Lord is saying here. He finishes saying, The Lord Jesus finishes.
so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you if you from your heart forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. It says from your heart. He doesn't say from your mouth. He says from your heart. If you don't forgive your brother from your heart, says the Lord, same way your heavenly father shall do with you. And what is the way he says? He says right here. His Lord was wrath and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due to him. When you don't forgive, you will never rest. Come on. It is what the Lord says. If I don't forgive, I will never rest. Whenever I see my brother, troubles there. Whenever I see my sister, troubles there. If you don't forgive, torments will come on you. It says your father will deliver you to tormentors. Are you ready for the word of God? I say, are you ready for the word of God? Take it as the word of the Lord. Don't take it as the preaching of the pastor. I will just review with you again the points of this chapter. And it says, first, we should humble as a child. Whoever shall offend one of these little ones is better for him that a millstone be hung about his neck and that he was thrown. Then it says, if your hand or your eye is the problem, if your hand or your eye is the problem, pluck it out. You can apply these verses isolated if you want. But right here, these verses are not isolated. Are a part of a specific teaching about forgiveness and about my brother and my sister. And it says, if you cause your brother to fall and your problem is your eye or your hand, cut it, pluck it. It is better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye or with one hand than having two hands. Or having two eyes to be cast into everlasting fire. It is a real situation here. I tell you that when you understand these parts of the scriptures, you will shake, you will tremble. Sometimes, when you don't understand it, it just have a look what it says. But it says, it's speaking about your brother, your sister, and not to make him fall. And it's speaking about forgiving your brother and sister and so on. And then it says, be careful. You could be cast into the hell of fire. It's so hard. Just go back home when all these services today finish. Study the word of God. Don't isolate any verse from the context. Study it properly and pray to the Lord. He will give you enough understanding. But the point is then forgiveness. The man that lost one of his sheep. How he rejoiced more for the one that was lost. And he found that for the 90 ones that were saved. 
And then it goes on and speaks about forgiveness again. And gives this parable. And then the Lord finishes saying, we must be as a child. Remember, there was a child in the midst of them. Remember that this teaching was given with a child in the midst of them. And the Lord was saying, to understand all this and to do all this that I'm telling you, you must be like this child. Otherwise, you will not be able to. That's why the Lord said, if you don't become as a child, you will never make it to the kingdom of heaven. So to follow all these, to understand all these, to do all these things, you must be like a child. Otherwise, you will not be able to. 